Well, I'm joined by Manchester City and England forward, Ellen White. First of all, Ellen, thank you for joining me. How are you and how has lockdown been for you? Hi. Um, yeah, thank you for, for having me on. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's been a bit strange, obviously. Um, trying to create kind of a new normal or a new routine has been interesting. Um, definitely as a footballer, it's, uh, I'm all about routine and, and keeping that. So, yeah, having to, to change my routine a little bit was challenging to start with. But, um, yeah, just getting in the routine of kind of training, trying to keep myself occupied um, and, you know, doing stuff around the house as well. So, uh, yeah trying not to go insane but yeah it's it, it hasn't been too bad to be fair um we're lucky that we live in a place where we can go for nice walks and stuff as well and i know you mentioned there obviously it changes a bit being a footballer and you like your routine but how much has it changed in terms of you not being able to work with your teammates on a daily basis you know have that routine where you go in somewhere every day yeah i think that that's been the weirdest thing really of of not being able to kind of go into club and train with my teammates obviously I'm able to train by myself kind of on a pitch or I've got a bike here, I've got gym equipment, but it's not the same as having your teammates around like the banter and, and obviously team training is uh, is a lot more fun than training by yourself. And like you say, with like a routine of kind of going out for food, seeing family and friends and also, um, yeah, just getting out and about has been obviously a little bit different. But um, but I think, you know, it's you, you work around it and obviously it's, it's the best for, for everyone at the moment that we do stay at home and we do kind of continue to to do what the government says in the guidelines but yeah it's definitely all about creating kind of a positive mentality really and have you been able to keep in contact with them have you had like whatsapp groups or uh, zoom sessions i suppose yeah yeah we've got like a a club kind of whatsapp um group so that involves the staff and then we have just a players one so that's where we can uh, where we can talk a bit <laughs> a bit differently than we do in the staff one um so yeah it's been good to chat on there and also yeah we've had like zoom calls in terms of like pilates we go into kind of groups so it's been nice to do something a little bit different kind of away from football as well so um yeah doing pilates weekly has been really nice and obviously um yeah I'm really close to quite a few of the the Man City girls so had a lot of FaceTimes with them as well and just I think it's just checking in with people really um and just checking in and with family and friends at the same time and you mentioned obviously being around the house being able to have a bit more time perhaps to do things that you wouldn't usually be able to do is there anything in particular that you've done that stood out obviously I know a lot of people have had time to watch things like Netflix do a bit more of that is there anything that you've kind of done that's been nice um yeah we've definitely me and my husband have watched a lot of uh, netflix um a lot of documentaries um and gone through a lot of series um but i think the ones we have really enjoyed are like um on prime was the test if you've seen that um with yeah, the australian it, yeah. cricket team yeah. um, i think it was a really good documentary to watch and obviously being like a sports person and really enjoying sport and different sports like i wasn't a big fan of cricket but it was really interesting to watch that behind the scenes and obviously the Michael Jordan documentary on Netflix at the moment, it's been really interesting. Um, and then just kind of doing like Lego and stuff that I wouldn't really do. I'm awful at it. I'm like a snail on it, but it's yeah. just something different. It takes your mind away from something else. And um, yeah, just, just trying to kind of clean the house and just keep your mind occupied really. Um, it's, it's, that's how I've kind of been getting through it really. And one thing that obviously has kept your mind occupied has been taking part in the 100k May Challenge. Obviously, you and Callum are doing that for the Derby Rimmer Foundation. And not just the 100k either, it's 150 for you two. So you're going that extra mile. Can you tell us a bit about like why you kind of got involved with that and why you wanted to do that? Yeah, so the Derby Rimmer Foundation is, is definitely a foundation that's close to our hearts. Um, Stephen Derby, who was diagnosed with MND about coming up to probably two years um, and also his friend Chris Rimmer who's also got MND um, they've collaborated and, and created this foundation and one of Stephen's um, uh, wife Steph one of her friends thought of the idea of doing 100k in May and I, I think she probably had the idea of a, of a couple of people kind of joining in raising money for the Darba Rimmer Foundation and it's just spiraled just three over 350 people are now kind of joined the team and we've raised over 130,000 for the Derby Rimmer Foundation. So kind of me and Callum, you know, we really wanted to do something to <clears throat> help the Derby Rimmer Foundation or raise awareness for MND. And, and this, you know, has really kind of pushed us on to, to try and do that, um, doing daily videos. And like you say, we've, we've gone for 150K instead of 100K, just something a little bit different. But yeah, for us, we just want to raise 
as much awareness for, for motor neurons disease and, and obviously try and raise as much money for, for Derby Rimmer Foundation as well. Obviously you're on to kind of the, the latter stages or the you know second half of the challenge now but obviously seeing your progress as it's gone along how have you felt going through the challenge I presume you've obviously played games in quick succession before but what has this kind of challenge been like? Yeah, obviously it is a challenge to, to do that amount of uh, kilometres in kind of a month. But I think, you know, we wanted to do something to, to help and to, to raise awareness. And I think doing the 150 has given us motivation to go out and, and rack up those kilometres. And yeah, it's just given us motivation, really. And, um, you know, just really driving us. Um, yeah, it has been has been challenging um but i think for us we we've enjoyed doing like videos daily as well and, and just doing something a bit different you know callum's running every day and then i'm doing kind of pitch sessions running and also a bit of walking just to, to try and kind of get to the 150 mark but yeah it's good that we're, we're over the halfway mark now and uh, quite a few of the people have already hit 100k which is incredible but um yeah we're we're just excited to see kind of at the end just how much has been raised and how much awareness has been raised as well through it all and you mentioned that awareness obviously you've done the kilometers you know the money will be raised and then you also look at the side that you and Callum are doing through the videos obviously the educational part as well how important is that kind of getting those messages out to people that certainly probably wouldn't have known about stuff like that before yeah we've had some like really positive feedback from the videos just saying that they didn't realize uh, the MND was fatal or the statistics or even the facts and I think me and Callum were probably a little bit naive to, to MND and didn't really know much about it when Stephen was first diagnosed and you know it's really opened our eyes and obviously we're really aware that, that it, it isn't as well known uh, you know within this country as a as a condition so definitely with our videos we're just trying to raise awareness some of it is really hard to hear but i think it's important that people do know those facts and statistics and understand what mnd is and that it is a fatal disease and that you know we're just trying to raise as much awareness and, uh, and as much money as we can for for the foundation which does amazing things to help other families that have been affected and also you know research to, to hopefully find a cure at some point it's amazing work that you guys are obviously doing and i feel like i know certainly myself watching the videos I've learned a lot from them. So it's great work that you guys are doing and, and that everyone's doing within the challenge. Now, obviously before the challenge and before this time came, we had, you know, the football season, we'd be coming towards the business end of it now. And you guys obviously top of the WSL, you know, coming towards the business end of the season on a great run really. Um, so what were your feelings kind of when the season had to be put on hold? Because you must've been pretty disappointed with the momentum you had. And as a footballer, you must be wanting to play football. Yeah, of course. You know, we 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 went to the She Believes. Obviously, we played Chelsea, and then we um we went to the She Believes for, for for the She Believes Cup, and then came back. And obviously, you know, lockdown happened the following week of my return, but we weren't able to go back into club just to just to you know precautionary of coming back from America. So yeah, it was challenging. It still is challenging, kind of not to be able to play football, and obviously seeing the Bundesliga start again, um, you know, it really gets you excited and want to, to go back to, to play in. And obviously, like you say, we, we, were, we were doing well top of the league and also, you know, doing well in the FA Cup. So, um, yeah, it is, it is hard to, to think about, you know, that side of football. But I think the, the main priority is the safety of everyone. And if that means the season was to end or if the season was to begin, you know, the, it is about the safety of, you know, fans, um, players, staff, and everyone else involved and, and the whole country and, and world that, that football does consume. So I think, um, you know, it will be sad if it was to end, but I think the, the most important thing is the safety of everyone. And I'm sure the league and, and football will be a little bit different after this pandemic. But I think, um, I think everyone is excited to maybe see a bit more football about. And I think um, definitely watching the Bundesliga, everyone was, was um, excited to watch that and see football finally being played. It was great to see the Bundesliga back at the weekend. Obviously, for you guys, it must be quite an uncertain time because as we've seen with different football leagues at the moment, you know, you look at you know, the Scottish League yesterday, they've kind of ended their season and the teams of, you know, like Celtic have been given the title, Hearts relegated. You know, you look at the Bundesliga, the Bundesliga are going again, and then you look at other leagues who potentially might end on a points per game thing. And it's obviously difficult for you guys because you're top by a point with obviously Chelsea beneath you with a game in hand. So with these different scenarios and not really knowing how it's going to work out, it must be quite an uncertain time for you. 
Yeah, obviously, there, yeah, there is a little bit of uncertainty of not knowing kind of what's going to happen. Um, and like you say, different countries are, are, are doing different things within, you know, their leagues. Um, and obviously, they're, you know, for the right reasons. Um, so for us, we're just trying to concentrate on what we can control at the moment. And that's, you know, for me, I'm just trying to stay as fit and healthy as I can. You know, if the if the league was to start again, then hopefully I'll be in a good position to, to go back to training and, and play. And if it... And if it wasn't to start again, then obviously we understand that and we know that why it needs to end and, and hopefully look forward to what um, next season might look like. So, um, yeah, there's there's lots of uncertainty, but I think that the main thing is just to try and stay positive within yourself and just keep ticking over. That's definitely what I'm doing, just trying to keep my training up and just trying to remain positive, whether it does start again or whether, you know, we, we look at next season. I think it's just about, you know, keeping that positive mindset, really. And just finally picking up on the point you made there about staying positive and being ready for whatever comes, is it very much a case of within your group at the moment and within the team, the message is kind of being to stay focused because we don't know what will come and just to be ready when whatever does happen, happens? Yeah, 100%. Um, I think, um, you know, it, it is about just trying to to remain positive, keep training, keep in the right condition. Um, and, you know, we you never know it it may start again or it may have to end but we still got to be in a good condition to hopefully go back next season so definitely it's all about keeping that positive mindset and and definitely for me even if the season was to start or the season was was to end um, I still enjoy doing exercise and that's definitely something that keeps me um you know mentally um switched on and, and in a positive mindset as well so um yeah I think it is it's obviously frustrating um you know being in lockdown and not being able to to know whether we're going to go back to playing football but I think the main thing is that hopefully you know we'll return next season if that was to happen if it wasn't to continue but um but yeah definitely just trying to keep as fresh as I can and, and keep training really. Ellen it's been a pleasure thank you very much for your time and all the best with the rest of the challenge and if the season gets underway. Thank you.